Homestead with authority. 10 runs on 12 hits Sunday. Jason Worth pinch hit grand slam, the decisive blow. Philly begins a three city road trip and the home team is struggling to keep pace. Tanner Roark aims to take advantage of the fighting Phils. It's the opener on Masson. It seems like the Nats just got home, so it's now time to go on the road again. Long road trip. We've got our fans here on the south side cheering on the Nationals at Citizens Bank Park. Now, the standings. The Mets behind Matt Harvey. A 1-0 win over the White Sox this afternoon. So the Nats lead is a half game. The Phils hanging in there. But the Marlins have tied them. Bob and FP, we wish you and your family a very good Memorial Day. For those of you who've been touched by Memorial Day in the past, we honor you and your families today. All right, FP Baseball. These guys have played the Nats tough, and the Phillies have been grinding. They've been a lot better than some people thought they would be. I think the Nats are catching this ball club at the right time. They're starting to come back down to earth. They've lost seven of the last nine. Just standing around the cage today. They just got beat up by the Cubs. Not a lot of energy in batting practice. Who knows how that translates during the game today. But when you talk about starting a nine day road trip off a nine game road trip off on the right foot you want to start off with a win today here against the Phillies. Yeah the Nats within one inning of sweeping here. Then the Phillies turned it around and swept the Nats in D.C. and they've won the last four games. So against the Mets Roark at Detroit Hellickson both pretty good their last times out. Well the last time the Nats face Hellickson here he gave up six runs in three innings then he went to Nats Park and threw seven shutouts so what Hellickson are they going to face today? Hopefully for the Washington Nationals the guy they faced in Philly last time. No major leaguer has ever homered in an opposing ballpark seven games in a row. Bryce could do that tonight. He's been going crazy at the bank. He loves this place especially the way he's hammered it over the last six times. on Masson brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you by Ocean City Maryland. Let us show you a good time in Ocean City Maryland book now at OCOcean.com and by your local Kia dealers. Take advantage of Memorial Day weekend with great deals during the Kia Summers on Us sales event. South Philly downtown in the distance and the Nats at the bank Citizens Bank Park. 
Look at Gio's hair. It's gone. Gio has lost his hair and his head. I think he donated it to Locks of Love, and that's pretty cool. Okay. We'll see Gio again in a couple of days. <laughs> We're still trying to get over the shock, ladies and gentlemen. Cloudy skies, 74 degrees at the bank tonight. Humidity way up. There was a chance of late afternoon rain. Really didn't see much of anything. So hopefully uninterrupted baseball tonight. As the Nats on the road are 15 and 10. The Phillies are 13 and 9 at home. Wilson Ramos continues to pace all catchers in baseball. Batting average and on base percentage. Ben Revere last 10 games. And by the way, against the Phillies, he's 7 for 20 career. Tanner Roark, he's been a durable guy. 42 times in 58 career starts. And this year, Tanner Roark has only failed to go six twice in a total of 10 starts. The Nats lineup, eighth in the league in hitting and in runs, third in home runs now. And we focus in on Wilson Ramos, who in the month of May has gone absolutely wild with the bat. 17 of those 25 RBIs coming this month, batting 349. He's also 286 career against the Phils. And here is 29-year-old Jeremy Hellickson, 53 and 51 career. A fastball 91, he'll cut the fastball, curveball changeup, so basically a four-pitch guy. Last start was a good one on the 24th against Detroit. Even though he suffered the three-to-one loss, he gave up just three runs in seven innings. He was outdueled by Justin Verlander's three-hit 10K effort. So the Phillies are tied with Miami, three and a half back of the Nets. Both of those ball clubs sitting at 26 and 24. I said the defense for the Phillies behind Jeremy Hellickson. Goodell Herrera Borges the outfield. Galvis Franco left side. Hernandez Howard right side. And Carlos Ruiz behind the plate. How about Freddie Galvis in the year he's having defensively? Just two errors all season long. He had one error through his first 48 games and made an error the other day. He went 44 games without making one. He's been working with Larry Bow on his footwork and trying not to be as flashy as he used to be and just making the routine play. He's been one of the best defensive shortstops in the league. Well he waited a number of years for his chance playing behind Jimmy Rollins for a while. And now Freddie Galvis has become a front line National League shortstop. And he's also hitting over 250. Big blow yesterday. Jason Worth will take that grand slam and bring it right up to his old ballpark here. You know what's cooler than just a regular old home run? A grand slam. Off the bench, pinch hit, one for one, four RBIs. It's a great day off, isn't it? Can you have a better day off no. than Jason Worth had yesterday? You, you can't. It's impossible. The only thing he didn't say that he had was a massage and chicken salad yeah. like he had during his game-tying home run in the rain a couple of years ago. So here's Revere. And behind the plate is 18-year veteran Greg Gibson. The crew chief's out at second base. 34th year for Dana DeMuth. Mike Esterbrook, 11th year at first. Clint Fagan in his fifth year, third base. Phillies have beaten the Nats four times in a row. That all started on a Sunday afternoon here when the Nats blew a late lead. So here's Revere against Hellickson. First pitch a little late, 7.08. In there. So Ben's at 182. 16 hits in 22 games. One for three career against the Phillies right hander who has spent most of his career with Tampa Bay. One year with Arizona before coming to the Phillies. And he's one and two and four starts against the Nats with a high ERA of 5.75. Revere rips one right side to his left Cesar Hernandez. So. I'm digging both teams unis today a tribute to Memorial Day obviously but I have to give the edge to the Phillies for one reason and that's the black socks. The Nats have the red socks with it but there's those are sharp. Those are really sharp. I don't know about the red cleats but the uniform from the socks up they win. I'm sorry. I have to be honest. And it's cool that uh, all the net proceeds from the sale of the caps and the jerseys today are donated to welcome back veterans program by Major League Baseball and over the last few years they've donated 30 million dollars to that charity. I think it's great. Yeah there is no doubt that in, the, in this country we should do everything we can to help our veterans. Those coming back from battle the things they have to deal with. Hopefully this day in Major League Baseball a giant step in that direction. 
Jason hits 269 career against the Phils. Off speed. And against the Phillies, he's hit 16 homers and 60 RBIs. There's Bryce. Not a good matchup for any Philly pitcher in this ballpark, has been Mr. Harper. 1 1 pitch. Well, if you remember, the Nats got Hellickson for six runs in three innings on April 15th, but he tossed seven shutout at Nats Park on April 27th. So, which Jeremy Hellickson shows up tonight is the question. How to play to the right side from Worth, and the count's two and two. Talked to Pete McCannon today, said they had a tough road trip. The Cubs playing very well, obviously. They went to Detroit and Chicago, and hmm. they've lost seven of the last nine. 2 2 pitch. Swing and a miss, and a ball diving down and away. We'll let you hear the greeting for Bryce Harper. Two. Last six games here, 14 hits, seven homers, 13 RBIs. Ernie Banks back in the mid 50s. And that's at old Connie Mack Stadium. All those numbers brought to you by Jeep. When I was growing up and as a fan, I said, there's no way I'm ever booing a player that gets to play baseball for a living and makes money doing it. Because he obviously did something. You didn't grow up in Philly. Very right in his life to get to this level. So even yeah. the worst of the worst of the big leagues, there's no way as a kid that I'm booing anybody. Sorry. Soft little pop up. Hellickson looks like he's playing catch out there. He's so free and easy. And the Nats go one, two, three to start their Memorial Day ball game. I want to wish everybody a happy Memorial Day and uh, thank all the military. Thank you, Tanner Roark. And he's hoping to honor them with an outstanding ball game in Philly tonight. Tanner is 3 and 4 with a 271. 11 start against this Phillies lineup. First of all, Jeremy Hellickson, the pitcher, is going to be batting eighth. Odubel Herrera this season. On base percentage 427. Only Ben Zobrist and Dexter Fowler on base more than him. He's fourth in walks. He's eighth in hits. And uh, in his short career, hitting 276 against the Nats with a 396 on base percentage. Tenor Roark's ninth career game against Philadelphia. A fastball average in 92 this year, slider 85, curveball 77, change up in the mid 80s. Opponents hitting 226 only against Tanner Roark. But did you see what lefties are hitting? Just 179 against the right hander. Well, Herrera usually does nothing but take against the Nats. They've walked him a bunch of times. He went up hacking. 
three for six with two RBIs against Tanner Roark is Odubel Herrera. He's in swing mode tonight. Well, he's always been in swing mode. He's just patiently aggressive. What does that mean? Well, he walks a lot, but he's got a good idea of the strike zone. He falls off a lot of pitches with two strikes. And we've seen pitchers get him 0 2, and then he'll work a walk. So let's see how Tanner and Wilson Ramos pitch to him here. Try to get that swing back fastball. And this great Gibson kind of. Stood up and stumbled a bit. I thought he might be about to raise the right arm. To the right side. Ryan Zimmerman a scoop and Odubel Herrera is 0 for his last eight. There's your nice defense tonight behind Tanner Roark standard, right? Nothing special. Jason's back in left field after the day off. I guess that's a little different from yesterday. National still the fewest errors in all of baseball <laughs> with just 19 in 51 games. He looks like a truck driver in that hat, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he should have been <laughs> he should have been part of Rolling Thunder in D.C. over the weekend. There's a base hit by Freddie Galvis. He has an eight game hitting streak with that base hit 11 for his last 30. He's just a good ball player. I mean, get him a shotgun in left field. He'll wear that thing in the blind this offseason. Guaranteed. And boy, does he hear it in this ballpark. It, it's already started. He likes playing here. He always has good games. He enjoys it. He said, I'm okay with it as long as they don't make it too personal. No, you know, no family jokes, nothing like that. Just fans to ball player. Here's Michael Franco, the third baseman. And I think it's safe to say yeah. that the Phillies in their meeting today said we're going to swing at some of the first strikes Tanner Roark throws to us. Franco, two for five with three RBIs against Tanner, who's making his 59th career start, his 96th major league appearance. A lot of hitting room right side Murphy way up the middle Franco usually pull hitter time given before the throw over and Greg Gibson made sure everybody could hear him the home plate umpire. Well if that is the Phillies game plan for tonight that's always a good one when you're struggling offensively as a team because because what happens collectively you all start thinking too much you're trying to get into counts get the perfect pitch you're overthinking everything. And how do you get back to hitting? Take all that out of it and just hack. See White swing. Yeah, the Phillies were swept at Chicago and they didn't face Jake Arietta or Jason Hamill. Uh, the Cubs have three other pretty good guys too. Well, they had a the Cubs starting rotation at a 1.21 ERA in that three game sweep. Galvis aboard. One out. Freddie is two out of three stealing this year, and Roark slips that one by him. Franco, that is, and Mercedes Benz will track it. Just a short little compact swing trying to hit behind the runner. Oh my goodness. He's trying to hit behind the runner if he's on the <laughs> scoreboard. He does not get cheated, does he? Franco, eight homers, 28 RBIs. Ryan Howard is scuffling. But he's been good against Roark. <laughs> and a tapper on the charge. Danny Espinosa. Loved it cleanly, had plenty of time for the throw, two outs. So the Phils losing 9 of 13, their runs per game way down. 
Only Atlanta, by the way, has scored fewer runs in the National League than the Phillies. So hitting under 250, not bringing guys in when they're at second or third, and not making contact. Franco with that out is 0 for his last eight, just like Herrera. And here's Ryan Howard. We'll tell you about his struggles. Some of that after the at bat, but he's hitting a buck 54. And just running over to third base with nobody there is Freddie Galvis. Anthony Rendon just shrugs his shoulders. And that's not defensive indifference when it happens in the first inning. No, and with the shift, I don't think they really cared. They're trying to get Ryan Howard, who's hit 097 in the month of May. Crowd buzzing about what they just saw. Easiest stolen base that Freddie Galvis has ever had. He's coming about 40 feet down the line with every pitch. The people Canada was telling me they were getting beat four to nothing in Chicago the other day. He had a pop up and he hustled, got all the way to second when it was dropped, advanced to third base on a wild pitch, and then scored the only run on a strike three dropped that was thrown to first. Pete McCann went up to him after the game and said you just made my day. I yeah. love baseball like that and there's a good example right there heads up by Freddie Galvis. He loves the way Freddie Galvis plays. Two and one with Murphy in right field on the shift. Now we're just reaching out and touching one. 158 career RBIs against Washington pitching for Ryan Howard. Four for 12 against Roark. But the league's been getting him out below the strike zone with two strikes. He is chasing a lot of balls in the dirt recently. Two two. Ryan Howard's had an impressive career. Rookie of the year in 05. He was an MVP the following year. LCS MVP in 09 for the Phillies. Part of that murderous lineup they used to feature here. Two balls, two strikes. Swing and a miss on 93 upstairs. So the runner at third doesn't bother Tanner Roark. The Nats will go back to work with Murphy, Zimmerman, and Rendon. Brought to you by Navy Federal Credit Union, proudly serving the armed forces and their families for over 80 years. Federally insured by NCUA. By DynCorp International, proudly serving our nation for 70 years. And by USAA, for those who gave everything, 
that we may breathe free. We honor you. And we hear tonight's game on Masson, recognizing Memorial Day. We would like to sincerely thank all past and current members of the U.S. military for their work and dedication in protecting our country. And a special word of prayer and thoughts for all of you families who have had relatives making the ultimate sacrifice for us. Top of the second, Daniel Murphy. The other way, it's looking good. Slicing into the corner. Murphy's going to have a two-bagger to lead off the top of the second on the first pitch. So he's racking up the extra base hits. Murphy has seven homers, two RBIs, and now 15 doubles. Well, there goes the no-hitter, Daniel Murphy. Look at him just stay on that pitch. Did that not look like Wade Boggs to anybody at home? Look at that. That is vintage Wade Boggs right there. Slapping it down the left field corner. Another double for Daniel Murphy, or should I say Wade Boggs? Did he eat chicken before the game? I'll tell you what. <laughs> I mean, there's been times when he's reminded me of Wade Boggs this year, but that two-handed finish with the helicopter at the top? Yeah. We got to see that again. Here's Zimmerman. Ryan, two for eight, career against Hellickson. And 85 career RBIs against the Phils. There's a ball well hit to left center. And this one is heading for 374. It's cut off and caught by Tyler Goodell with an outstanding play to keep the Nats off the board, though Murphy does tag and go to third. Well, productive out, even though Ryan Zimmerman probably was thinking at least two bases, maybe more right here. He got something up from Hellickson and not even trying to move Daniel Murphy. He's trying to move himself. And a nice play by Tyler Goodell. I've been seeing him on all the highlight reels in left field. So a lot of range, running catch. Nicely done. I want to see a double shot of him and Trey Turner when Trey comes back to the big leagues. Two big leaguers who look like they're 15 years old. Yeah, it's a good call. Here's Rendon Anthony. 381 over his last 18 games. I'm sure there's a lot of folks out there that had a fun Memorial Day and when you said double shot. <laughs> it reminded they're, them they're of something. Thinking, okay. I'm in. Tyler Goodell. They claim he's 23. Way inside to Rendon. Inside some more numbers. So here's what Rendon has done to elevate his game in May by almost 50 points. All of his homers, most of his RBIs, slugging, moving the ball around. He is looking for his first career hit against Jeremy Hellickson, 0 for 7 with a walk. Well, he'll take a base hit, but his ball club will take a ground ball to second. It'll put him up one nothing. Pete McCannon choosing to play his infield back here early. Two one. Rendon thinking about right field. To Anthony Rendon, 10 RBIs last 18 games. Outfield around to the right just a bit. No swing and miss. Something about Hellickson not working for Anthony. Now 0 for 8 career. Two outs on his second strikeout. So how about Wilson Ramos in the season he's having so far and yesterday he capped off a perfect day on base four times with the home run late. The sixth home run of the year was a no doubter to left. That was just a one horn. Oh there's two horns. Jose Lobaton taking off the lid. Ramos in May at 349. Every time 
This is where you wonder if Wilson Ramos can see anything to hit. He's a good bad ball hitter though. He might expand his zone. Ruiz setting up away. Ramos taking over. Must have been low. Two out. So Ramos in May, four homers, 17 RBIs, five doubles to go with the four home runs. He's taken some walks too, nine of his 10 all year. So a more patient Ramos is also doing more damage. Ryan Howard takes away an RBI hit. Ramos waited forever for that off speed pitch. And Howard waited till the right moment, right there, to go up and take it away. Philadelphia Tanner Oaks off to a strong start to the 2016 season if he has had one issue thus far it's been early in his appearances seven of Roark's 19 earned runs allowed this season have been in the first inning of ball games and that's something that Tanner acknowledged after his last start is something he needs to improve upon he said he needs to do a better job of getting into the flow early on his last start against the Mets the only earned run that he allowed came in the first inning a home run by David Wright and he said after the game that home run got a fire going into him, but he needs to make sure he has that fire going from pitch one. Mission accomplished so far today, guys, as Roark put up a zero in the first, but that's something he wants to focus on going forward this season, coming out of the gates with that fire. 16 pitches, 11 strikes, first inning. Now add another, that's Dan with Coons.com. Scouting report, over two million vehicles sold and counting. Probably a reason why he wasn't as comfortable as a reliever. Yeah, come out punching when you come out of that bullpen. And some guys that have started for the majority of their career have trouble getting into the rhythm of you know, zero to 60, so to speak. And you talked about this last time he started. He got, he's a guy who sets up hitters from at bat to at bat. You can't do that when you're out of the pen. Yep. You're just uh, pedal to the middle. Got to have outs. Mike Maddox has done a fantastic job with this pitching staff. Carlos Ruiz, two for eight career against Tanner. That's foul. There's some guys just look good in that camo hat. Mike Maddox is one. <laughs> just kind of fits him. Tanner Roark's another one. I just had a flashback to Adam LaRoche. Oh, yeah. In a ball cap like that. He looks weird without one. Getting ready to play the White Sox soon. We were doing a little research last night. And just reminded of a great net. There's a great curveball by Roark. Front door on Carlos Ruiz, and Nissan will track it. Man, just locks him up. Slow curveball at 78. Couldn't pull the trigger. Here's Cesar Hernandez. Another guy who's a tough out. 333 career against the Nats.
Nice pull of the string right there. Switch hitter Benning 252 left handed. 253 overall, so quite consistent. And three out of five career against the Nats right hander. Pours it in there and the count's full. Phillies haven't scored a lot of runs all year, but they win close games. As I mentioned, only Atlanta fewer runs. Braves put five on the board to beat the Giants today. So right now they're a run ahead of the Phillies, and Tanner just walked Cesar Hernandez. The second annual 80s night returns to Nance Park Friday, June 10th. This time it's not members only, it's just Ryan Zimmerman. First 20,000 fans, you'll receive a Nance fanny pack while all fans will be able to enjoy a pregame concert featuring the leg warmers. For more information and purchase tickets, visit nationals.com slash 80s night. I'm going to be so sad on June 10th when we're no longer promoting that event with the promo of the decade on Masson. That's pretty good. Here's Tyler Goodell, who's already made one outstanding defensive play. I feel like there'll be certain ways you'll still celebrate that night throughout the year. But enough <laughs> about my wardrobe. <laughs> so are you going there? I was just letting it marinate. You're the one that threw it out there. Better to respond and get it over with. 23 year old rookie a rule five pickup from Tampa Bay last December 10th never made it to the big leagues with the race 41st overall player taken five years ago Memorial Day bag everything is authenticated in baseball these days. One oh pitch Tanner looking for a ground ball here. Goodell is fast he stole over a hundred bases in the minor leagues. One for one at the big league level so a tough guy to double up. As he hits it right at somebody they start the runner in front of him and that balls into center field but it'll save Wilson Ramos an error as it took Hernandez a while to find it so just credit him with his third stolen base of the year he's been gunned down five times well it looked like Wilson took his time on this but you look at the jump from Hernandez and he had that base stolen even with a good throw and give Ben Revere credit for charging hard right here and backing up the play. If not, Hernandez is in third base easily, but the hustle by Revere keeps the Phillies second baseman at second. Scoreboard his here says three and one. I haven't I haven't seen Greg Gibson do anything to correct it. Umpires will do that. I think it's possible that previous pitch was down the middle, but with Ramos jumping up to throw, maybe Greg Gibson didn't give the Nats the call. Infield in three one with one out. Swing and a foul tip. It is three and two.
Runner at third, one out, no score. Tanner Roark went with the slide step quick pitch, try to sneak that fastball past Cadell. So slide steps aren't just for base runners, huh? No. Tanner Roark would do it with the runner on second, do it with the runner on third. It's more like a quick pitch for him. 3 2 again. Swing and another foul tip. Jeremy Hellickson batting eighth gives the Nats a chance to get out of the inning if Tanner can retire Goodell. Well, he just threw a pitch in the dirt that Wilson Ramos didn't block. Hernandez advances to third. Now in a two strike count, does Tanner Roark have the confidence to bounce something here with the pitcher coming up, a base open? With the runner on third base. Almost wants it down. Slider taken, good at bat by Goodell. And a pair of walks around a steal and a wild pitch. Getting Tanner Roark in some hot water here. And Dusty Baker knows that Pete McCannon can do a couple of things here. Does he trust Hellickson, who's two for 12 with an RBI to swing away, or do we get a, maybe a safety type sacrifice bunt here? One that might advance the runner at first, but not the runner at third. Got good speed on both corners here. Well, you got a guy hitting 204 on deck, too, and I, I wouldn't be surprised. Well, we'll see. It looks like he's going to bunt. He's going to lay one down. The runner's going to score. Roark, Roark has no play at the plate, but he still had time at first. So Hellickson squeezes home a run for his second RBI and a 1 0 Phillies lead. Well, nice read by Hernandez. You got good wheels on third base, and as soon as he sees the ball down, he takes off. So, not a suicide squeeze. More like just a sacrifice bunt that Hernandez with his speed read perfectly at third base. A little interference right there. They kind of got tangled up, but Roark made the play. So credit Cesar Hernandez with the stolen base, advancing on a ball in the dirt. And then some pretty good base running on the butt by Hellickson. That was all created by Hernandez. Here's Peter Borges, the aforementioned number nine hitter, who's batting 204. So the Phillies are run without a hit. And this ball spinning to the right side for Murphy. Zimmerman had a long way to retreat to the back, playing well off the line. Phillies manufacture a run to take the lead.
out there. You guys are the true heroes. Happy Memorial Day. We love you guys. What well nothing said. Phillies as we head to the top of the third. Happy Memorial Day, everybody. Max Scherzer, he's a guy that looks good in the camouflage. He does. He's also a guy that looks good with his dog. Bring your furry friend in Nats Park Monday, June 13th for this season's fourth Pups in the Park. That's presented by Budweiser. Owner and dog tickets are available for Pups in the Park dates throughout the season. And a portion of that goes to benefit the Humane Society. So that's good. Visit nationals.com slash pups to purchase your ticket. See the eyes on his dogs? Same as his. Pretty cool. All right, buddy. Get the Nats some runs here. Top of the third, Espinosa, Roark, and Revere. Ten pitches per inning so far for Hellickson. Total of 20 pitches, 12 strikes. Danny hitting 219 left handed. 201 overall after a base hit and a walk to close out his day yesterday. Nine career homers against the Phils. That's on a home run tear, by the way. 14 their last six games. And Espinosa taking all the way on 2 0. Looks like Hellickson's got some swing back to that fastball. One. Espinoza not hit hard enough to get by Freddy Galvis, who picked it cleanly. Let's go inside the numbers with PNC. Where the Nats rank with their 30 and 21 record. There's 64 homers behind the Mets, 72 and the Cardinals, 69. ERA behind the Cubs, who have a 2.65 and nobody's ahead of them in defense. You take those numbers to the bank and that means you're in first place. High in the air first pitch swinging Tanner Roark. Oduble Herrera. Five in a row for Hellickson since the Murphy double. So the Nationals go one for nine first time through. Beautiful ballpark that has seen some championship seasons. I honestly thought this place might be full tonight. Coming back from a road trip, you're playing one of your arch rivals. Phillies have been a surprise in the National League this year. But a night game, and a lot of folks stayed home. Here's Revere bounced out sharply to the right side first time. Ellickson has been trying to get that fastball under the hands of the left handers. So Ben was here. Part of last season came here in 13. He had 298 and 96 games. Then he went to Toronto in a three player deal at the trading deadline hit 319 for the Blue Jays. This one out towards short. Freddie Galvis knows he has to hurry. And the Nats are going quietly in some of these innings against Jeremy Hellickson. In and out up and down that's his game.
Steven Strasburg was outstanding again yesterday. Pitch count got him on a hot day at B. He threw 104 pitches in six innings, but one run on six hits against the most prolific run scoring team in the league. Last time I checked, 9 0 is pretty good. And it's the really last good, yeah. person that did this in this franchise was some guy named Pedro Martinez in 97, and he ended up winning the Cy Young that year. So let's see how this thing finishes for Steven Strasburg, but it couldn't have started any better. Hey, all that matters is wins, right? So that graphic backs it all up. 12th straight for Steven going back to last year. His team has won his last 15 starts. All star game uh, in somebody's hometown, right? Oh. I mean, could the Nationals battery be going to San Diego? Oh. Just floating that out there. I didn't even think of that, said the best analyst in the league for nothing. Odubel Herrera with a base hit. Always seems to do damage against the Nats. So I mean, that busts up an 0 for 8 for him. He's in 320. He's doing damage against other people, too. I mean, he could flat out hit. What a find. Rule 5 draft from Texas back in December of 2014. And I know I've said this before, but it bears repeating. When Texas left him unprotected in the Rule 5 draft, he had just led the Texas League in hitting at 321. They must have a lot of talent among their infielders, and the Rangers do. But I mean, 321, he can run, he can hit, he can drive in runs. Freddy Galvis has similar base hit to the one we just saw back in the first inning. Well, Pete McCannon recently benched Oduble for not running out of ball. He took him right out of the game, and that's his thing. Hey, you run balls out hard. And there's a lot of people around baseball that said, well, why would you do that to one of your best players, a young player at that? And I think that's exactly when you do it as a skipper. You're trying to teach yeah. a young player how to play the game the right way. And maybe if you let that go for two or three years, then he never gets it. He never understands it. No matter what the situation is, you run out every ball. Well, and if you do it then, maybe you never have to do it again from the manager. Right. And if you don't do it, then everybody says, oh, the manager's lost control of his team. He just lets them do whatever they want. But he was openly criticized by some baseball people for benching him. And he's always been that I'd, way. I'd like to know who baseball people are if they're criticizing that. Wow. I mean, that's why you have a guy like Pete McCannon with a bunch of young players, right? You're teaching them how to play. And these days, a lot of that happens at the big league level. Because guys are rushed, because yeah. it's just kind of the way it is now. If you can play, you get up quick. Galvis with a hitting streak of eight games after his base hit last time. Herrera, six out of nine stealing. Tanner Roark doing a good job of holding and freezing him. Galvis is the one who had the walk off double to the left field wall that beat the Nats here on a Sunday afternoon back in April, preventing a sweep. There's a bouncing ball right side. Murphy comes to get it. Espinosa, bang, 4 6 3. If Murphy goes to tag the runner, they may not turn that with Freddie Galvis' speed. With Espinosa's arm, they do. Well, they got rid of it quick. That's a key. Murphy gets rid of it quick, and then Espinosa does the same thing with something on it. So watch Daniel Murphy gets it out of his glove quick. Perfect feed to Espinosa. Comes flying across the bag with a strong throw. That was nicely done. Some double plays, you just watch them, and they've got that rhythm that almost looks like they're taking infield. Yeah, that one did for sure. Base is empty, two outs. Michael Franco, the hitter. There's that run back fastball. Might have started a little bit outside. Tapper, Roark knows Rendon's on the way. And that's the quick inning he needed. So we go to the middle innings. Worth Harper Murphy straight ahead.
Citizens Bank Park in Philadelphia. Jason Worth made a minor adjustment prior to yesterday's pinch hit grand slam in his work in the cage. He lowered his hands a little bit, and after the pinch hit grand slam, he credited that little tweak with getting him in a good place mechanically. Worth told me today that his hands really end up in almost the same spot when he's got his foot down in a hitting position. But hitting coach Rick Shu told me that the adjustment kind of synced things up for Worth timing wise. Worth says that there's very little bit of difference between being a top player and being out of the game altogether and needing to find a new line of work. And maybe this little adjustment will lock him in for a little bit. Shu feels that getting those hands down kind of locks up Worth's timing, gets everything together, will allow him to hit the ball more consistently from line to line. Well, he elevated that thing, didn't he, with those hands down yesterday? As Dan with our Coons.com sideline report, over 2 million vehicles sold and counting. Hellickson struck out Worth on a pitch like that for the second out of the game. There's some funny contact going on that right off the end of the barrel. Ryan Howard to Hellickson for the first down. Join us for our first Budweiser viewing party at Nats Park on Saturday, June 4th. Well, we won't be there, but you will be. Nats take on the Reds. Watch the game on the big screen. You can listen to Bob all night long as you enjoy $5 Budweiser's. And the more you have, the better we sound. Gates open at 3 p.m. Visit national.com slash viewing party. Whoa. Right? You stole my line. I was about to say that. So here's Harper. Bryce hit a foul ball that was in the air for about three or four seconds first time. Hellickson really has some guys off balance here. He's retired seven straight. Bryce career against the Phillies. Right around 287, 14 homers, 36 RBIs. Seven of those home runs in this ballpark, as we mentioned, last six games. He waited on that one and rifled it foul. Upper deck left side. Into the 8 o'clock hour we go here at Citizens Bank Park, home of the Phillies. The Nats are 30 and 21. Phillies are 26 and 24. That one bounces more than way out in front. So the second pitch that he filed off is exactly what Dusty Baker's talking about, how he's getting his pitch, and he's getting him in certain counts, and he's missing him, fouling him off. But that was 92, where the second pitch was, with a lot of plate. And that's a pitch when he's locked in, he doesn't miss. Those last year used to go out the other way. And they will again this year. He just He's just finding it. So no players ever hit seven in a row in somebody else's ballpark. That's a home run in seven straight games. Ten players have done it, including Bryce, six times. 2-2 two -two pitch. Big curveball. Strikeout number three for Hellickson. Time for some yellow wood, bringing the lumber, and let's check out Wade Boggs' first at bat. There's times this year when he's reminded me of Wade Boggs, but this one, come on. I mean, that's dead on. Watch the finish, the two hands, how he kind of goes down. He's even got the beard, for goodness sakes. And that's a compliment, because Wade Boggs could absolutely hit, and so could Daniel Murphy. Wade Boggs was such a great hitter for that ballpark at Fenway. Yeah. He used to pepper the green monster with doubles constantly. He could pull the ball when he had to. Murphy on the first pitch pops one up. Ruiz ejecting the mass, but it's well back into the seats. Well, so far ahead right now. But 390 with pop, seven home runs, 30 RBI. Yeah. The extra base hits all over. It's not just singles galore 390. Yeah, he's hitting 390 into Memorial Day. Actually 387 coming in. But. It's funny how over the years the holidays have kind of been 
signposts for the baseball season. There's a high drive to deep right center. See you later. Daniel Murphy with his eighth of the year. I don't know. Maybe he'll finish Memorial Day closer to 400 than 390. And the Nets are back tied with the Phils. So many wahs we get right here. <laughs> he has 74 hits in 52 games. Oh, he's going to San Diego too. And he might get some hardware at the end of the season. You never know. Now batting 394, Daniel Murphy. So double to left first time up. What does a good hitter do? Well, he's not going to throw me out there again. He's going to challenge me in. He was late on the pop up that just got into the seat. So what does he do? He makes the adjustment, catches it out front, and ties the game at one. Ellickson will give up some homers. That's the tenth of the year. Ryan Zimmerman almost got him first time. Hit her off the end of the bat. And it was run down by Tyler Goodell at the 374 mark. Left center. Hits Murphy. So Murphy last year with the Mets hit 14 regular season home runs before he went crazy with seven in the postseason. And some kind of pace he's on right now. But he found himself as a hitter in the postseason. Instead of just being a guy that's a tough out, he said, you know what, I can do damage too, to the tune of 20 home runs, 20 plus home runs. Didn't look like Zimmerman went, Mike Esterbrook agrees. Count goes to two and two. So Daniel Murphy, 70 career homers with that one. And Zimmerman can't reach that one downstairs. So Hellickson has been perfect against everybody, but the league's leading hitter with a double to left, a home run to right center, a no doubter. And the Nats are even, middle of the fourth. I'm going to show you how really good or great big league hitters make adjustments. The first pitch from Hellickson is a cutter in. He's late. You see how deep that ball got? Almost was an out. So what does he do as a hitter? I'm going to catch it out front. So the first one was 85 and a cutter. This one was 88. So it was even harder. But Murphy makes the adjustment because he knew he was late on the first pitch. Basically, he got away with one, right? But good hitters, great hitters like Daniel Murphy, make pitch-to-pitch -pitch adjustments. So now he catches the second pitch out front. He started a little bit earlier and shot it in the stands. I mean, as a guy that couldn't hit, I love to watch Daniel Murphy do things like that and just marvel at him and, and envious that he can do the things he can do from pitch-to-pitch. 
394 on Memorial Day. Howard. Most guys can't do that, Carp. Well, I mean, that's advanced stuff. And, and I mention Memorial Day because a lot of guys hit 380, 400 in April. And then things go downhill fast. But Memorial Day has always been considered the first signpost of that long race gotcha. that is the Major League season. The second one is the 4th of July with the All-Star break right behind it. And then, of course, you have Labor Day at the start of December. So if you're doing great things, by the time that first holiday arrives, it's uh, the mark of a season that can be very special. One and two to Ryan Howard. This time, Roark strikes him out on a pitch tailing away. And we heard booze here last time. The Nats were in Philly. He has struck out twice, and that's number three for Tanner Roark. Well, they're booing because, you know, they called up Tommy Joseph. He was the key part in that Hunter Pence trade. So he's been playing first, and Pete McCannon's actually been sitting Ryan Howard against right-handers. And Tommy Joseph is 10 for his first 35 as a big leaguer. He's got all kinds of pop. Hits the ball all over the field. He's a right-hander. Nats fans haven't seen him yet. But fans here in Philly want him to play first base. So we'll see how the series works out with Howard at first versus Tommy Joseph. Yeah, who's 24 years of age. And you know what the Philly fans are thinking. Okay, enough. We're building for the future. Let's go. Carlos Ruiz called that on strikes first time. Roark threw him that front door curveball. And now he's got him one two. So Ryan Howard is 0 for his last 11. Franco 0 for his last nine. Phillies suddenly aren't getting anything from their three and four hitters. Well, you look, Carp, they've 38 home runs on the year. Yeah. The Nats have 65 home runs on the year. So they have to string a bunch of hits together, steal bases, do exactly what Cesar Hernandez did. Only Atlanta fewer runs and home runs than the Phillies. One-two pitch. Tanner Roar grabs it, and now Carlos Ruiz is 0 for his last 20. So they need some life and energy in the middle of that lineup. Tomorrow night we're here at Philly. In fact, two more here. It'll be Joe Ross and Aaron Nola, who's four and three. Max goes against left-hander Adam Morgan on Wednesday. There's a day off Thursday. The Nats will be at the Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati for the weekend. Other day off next Monday, and then on to U.S. Cellular Field, South Side of Chicago. Joe charting before starting. And here's Cesar Hernandez in the batter's box. Did you just go like Dr. Seuss right there? I like it. It was good. Yeah, and uh, you're thing one and I'm thing two. <laughs> Charting before starting. I like it. Joe Ross, I am. And Joe says, tomorrow, <laughs> early in the ball game, I don't want to be departing. 1-1. One, one. You always got to take it just a little too far. Well, you know, I'm, in, I'm invoking Gary Templeton here, remember? Just, just let it eat for a little bit. Let it marinate. Remember Templeton yeah. one year? He wanted to be the starting shortstop. Yeah. He said, if I ain't starting, I ain't departing. And uh, he didn't depart. Two balls, two strikes. Two two pitch. Cesar Hernandez base hit. Tanner Roark still doesn't have a one two three inning. Three batters last inning thanks to the double play after Herrera's leadoff single and Tyler Goodell coming in after walking his first time.
Hernandez swiping a back first time. Making him three out of eight. Phillies 20th steal of the year. Well the jump he got first time wasn't from a guy that's three out of eight. He had a great jump. Doesn't walk much. That was only his fifth of the year. Roark, the good move to get Hernandez back in there. Target away by Wilson Ramos. Runner holding. Off the end of the bat. It's going to hang up for Bryce Harper. Cutting it off in the gap. Tanner Roark back tied. And the fourth inning of National Baseball brought to you by the RAV4 Hybrid All Wheel Drive and Unexpected Performance. Visit buyatoyota.com tonight. On to the fifth 1 1 game. Happy Memorial Day and thank you to our troops for your service. Well done, Sammy. Thank you, sir. 1 1 ball game, Rendon, Ramos, and Espinosa. Speaking of Anthony Rendon, there's an Anthony the Ant Rendon figurine giveaway coming up on June 11th at Fitzner Stadium, thanks to the Potomac Nationals. They'll be back in town starting the 9th. $1 drink specials, Peanuts playing cards giveaway on the 10th. So, you know how to. Find him, call him, log on. Anthony the Ant Rendon figurine giveaway, June 11th, Family Fun Day, the 12th. That ant will take two and go to right. Big swing early in the count. It's even 1 1. That's a good take. Gets the count in his favor. Wilson Ramos hit the daylights out of the ball first time and. Ryan Howard stretched his 6 6 frame to take an RBI hit away from him. 2 1 pitch. Strike call. Anthony Daw thought it was high and tight. What does Nissan think on the pitch track? You can just tell by the body language he thought it was in. Good frame by Ruiz gets the call. Borderline pitch.
Little wardrobe malfunction. Two two from Hellickson. Anthony Rendon, seventh inning yesterday. Fourth home run of the year. The other way. Look at just taking that ball right out of Eric Fryer's glove. And remember, St. Louis had just scored to make that a 3 2 game. So he leads off that inning, and then the Nats get four more on the Worth Grand Slam. Right down the middle. Anthony Rendon now 0 for 9 career against Hellickson. That's his fifth strike out of the night. His last three outs have been K's. There's certain times a hitter where you start thinking, there's no way he's going to throw me five fastballs in a row. I mean, this guy's known for his off speed. He's got a pretty good curveball changeup combination. I think that might have fooled Anthony Rendon right there with another heater. A couple heaters in, a couple heaters away. Especially when he struck out on a slow pitch. I think a curveball his first time up. Ramos pulls it hard and foul. More numbers from Jeep this time Wilson Ramos we talked about the dramatic improvement for Wilson in May. He was on the. Bereavement list for several days after he lost his grandfather in April. Came back with a vengeance. On base percentage. Well over 410 and yeah, it's not like he was bad in April. Got off to a good start. Now it's a great start. Off speed, it's low, two and one. His feet are so slow, his lower half. There was times last year at that open stance where he would really come closed. Like late and fast, and his head would move, and now he's just so quiet with his lower half. His feet are just, watch how soft he's striding. Keeps your head still and you make good decisions. Obtained by the Nationals and Mike Rizzo at the trading deadline six years ago. The Twins needed a closer and the Nationals traded theirs to them, Matt Caps. To get Wilson Ramos and left handed pitcher, pitcher Joe Testa. Three and two. They always done the wave here. They used to boo the wave here. Yeah, I feel like this is new. Yeah. That's what it's come to here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the folks are at the ballpark on a holiday evening having a good time. Hey, they're, it's they're just expressing it differently than Philly fans used to. All right, that's enough. All right, Chuck. We're good. Now there's another foul ball. He's going to show it again. <laughs> Wilson Ramos with one out, waging quite a battle with Jeremy Hellickson. Ramos to the right side for Cesar Hernandez. 
When you have insight, you know how to handle your finances. With confidence, it's brought to you by PNC Bank. For the Achiever and you, we should be seeing Matt Belial soon. Three games, six hits in four innings. Strikeout to walk numbers are good. And that's what he did before pulling that calf muscle in seven ball games with the Nats on the right side of that bullpen. Uh, I thought they were going to get involved in the wave. I do miss the Nationals bullpen lottery in right field. Danny Espinosa bunts it right back to the pitcher. Nationals go one, two, three in the fifth inning. Ellickson and Roark matching up well. Memorial Day being brought to you by Navy Federal Credit Union proudly serving the armed forces and their families for over 80 years federally insured by NCUA by DynCorp International proudly serving our nation for 70 years and by USAA for those who gave everything that we may breathe free we honor you and tonight we air the ball game on Masson in recognition of Memorial Day. We'd like to thank all United States military personnel for serving our nation. Many, many thousands of folks in the D.C. area visiting Arlington National Cemetery when I left town this morning. I read an essay today about Memorial Day that said every American at some point should visit a military cemetery, whether it's here or abroad and ponder the things that they did for us so that we can live free. Everybody says you shouldn't celebrate Memorial Day that it's a somber holiday but I disagree I'll celebrate a hero that sacrifices life for my freedom every single day. That's a grand old flag flying here in Philly tonight. 2 1 to Hellickson. From Tanner Roark, who throws the heater upstairs by him. Tanner, first four innings, 64 pitches, 43 strikes. And he fights that one off. He has the Phillies only RBI in the squeeze bunt thankfully that ball and they don't have screens here by the dugout that thing flew into a row of empty seats right about on that line where the camera sits 2 2 pitch big slow curveball and Anthony Rendon has it for the first out bottom five. That'll bring in the number nine hitter Peter Borges.
put on waivers by St. Louis during spring training. Philly signed him to a one year free agent deal. Bouncing ball to Daniel Murphy, first time up. Two hopper, Danny Espinosa. Borges can fly. He's a right handed batter that gets down the line in a hurry. Two outs. Top for Toyota Case for Kids. Washington area Toyota dealers want to help children and their families by making a $20, $37 donation to Children's Inn at NIH for every strikeout by a Nats pitcher this season. Just trying to shortchange him. Yeah, not a lot of Case tonight. Roark has three. Hellickson has five. These guys are just pitching. And they're pitching to not solid contact, as they say. That's a great sign for Tanner, all the ground balls. Top of the order, Odubel Herrera, a ground ball to Zimmerman, and a line drive base hit to Ray. In the air to center. Ben Revere knows all about center field here. Tanner Roark finally gets that 1 2 3 inning. He'll lead off top six in a 1 1 game. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Washington Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the expressed written consent of the Washington Nationals. William Penn presiding over City Hall and up there on Broad Street. And the Fanatics shooting hot dogs into the seats. You know what they do when you do the wave here in Philadelphia? They shoot you with a hot dog the next inning. Just take you right out of there. You can take out a whole row with that thing. Everybody appears to be okay and hungry. Nats box score. It's the Daniel Murphy show tonight. It's about it. Opposite field double second inning. Pulled a home run to right center fourth inning. Here's Tanner Roark fly ball to center his first time. Strike one. Tanner still looking for his first base hit of the year. I'm feeling it right here. All chips in the middle. I'm all in. Here it comes. Base hit. Ready? He went Danny <laughs> Espinosa on us and tried to bunt. They all count. It's a good idea. Yeah, Franco was back. And Tanner's a good athlete. He can get down the line. He can run. Bunt called off now with two strikes. I'm staying in. My chips are still in the middle. Okay. We'll see if you're going to the penthouse or tap city. <laughs> Or corner tap. I'm sure that place is rocking tonight. He went. Well, I'm not a good gambler. Never have been. 
If you want to gamble with your apps on your phone, it's an awesome segue. Fall Nationals Baseball Live with MLB.com at bat. Stay up to the moment at any moment with game day, live video highlights, stat cast. You can download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball on your phone or tablet. Top of the order, Ben Revere. And Dusty doing some teaching with Anthony Rendon, telling him to get those hands back just a hair earlier and slower. He was talking about that the other day that sometimes when Anthony Rendon's not going well, he, he gets in a rush with that hand thing. And he's telling him just relax him, start him earlier and slower, get him in that launch position, don't rush that part. Watch. I'll tell you what, one of the he started as a hitting coach. Dusty Baker was a hitting coach for the Giants before he was their manager. And he's still one of the better hitting coaches in baseball. Ben Revere can't get that curveball. Man, that thing is really dropping. So Revere has bounced out to second and to short. He was still hurt the first time the Nats were here. Michael Lee Taylor had a leadoff homer in that series. I mean, he just preys on guys' aggressiveness. Strikeout number seven. <laughs> Bringing in Worth with two outs. Trying to keep the inning alive for Bryce Harper. <laughs> now, P, if you faced a guy like this, and I know he can throw 92, 93. Were you ever tempted to move up in the box because of his off speed? No, you, you never want to do that. That's kind of an old school thing that guys don't do anymore. Just stay where you stand. Because if you scoot up in the box, now you have a tendency to go chase that low pitch. If you stay back in the box and he bounces stuff, now it's it's low to you. Not just kind of low. So I mean, you just have to look for the ball up. Make your eyes see the ball high. And that's when you as Daniel Murphy says, get off your ace swing. 1 1 to Worth, who has struck out and bounced to the right side. Because if you do that, Carp, now you're making 92, 93, 95, 97. Plus, you might chase some things that you normally wouldn't. Take heart, Nets fans. Daniel Murphy will bat next inning. He's the one guy solving Hellickson tonight in a 1 1 game. Not. He has been unbelievable again. I mean, what else can we say about this guy? He just goes out there and gives you everything he's got. It's not 
spectacular by any means, but another solid performance as he goes into the the bottom of the sixth. And if he's not the best bargain in baseball, he's barely making over the major league minimum. You talk about all these twenty million dollar pitchers throughout baseball today, and Tanner Roark can hang with any of them. Yeah. And he's barely making over the minimum. He's gonna get paid someday, trust me. But the best bargain in baseball, you're looking at him. He gets ahead of Freddie Galvis, bottom of the sixth underway. That was his 77th pitch. The ratio is great, 52 strikes. Trinan Rivero. That ball is well hit to right. And the Phillies are on top. Freddie Galvis is fifth of the year. It sounded like a homer. Caught a curveball out front, just rolled the wrists. And you're right, it had the sound you knew in this ballpark on a night like tonight. That's way out of here. And Freddie Galvis with his fifth home run of the year. But he has turned it into a really good major league shortstop. He has been in the big league since 2012, and he's only 26. Espinosa throws out Michael Franco. Who's now 0 for 10? Next up, Ryan Howard. And if you're the Nats, that's a so what home run. And what do I mean by that? Well, you had to score to win this game anyway, so you got to figure out a way to solve Helixson or their bullpen. So, you know, if you're in that third base dugout, guys will be saying, hey, we had to score some more anyways. Let's go. Shift on Murphy and right. And the off speed has him way in front. Cut fastball in, change up away. Got him thinking about that heater on the inner half. Howard to right center. Revere. He's there and he makes a fantastic catch. To a knee, heading straight into the scoreboard. Two outs. Maybe a little local knowledge for Ben Revere. It's all about the angle he took to this that allowed him to slide. If you have to take a steeper angle to this because it's hit better, you don't get a level off right here. Watch him level off and go parallel to the fence almost right at the end. Once you start running parallel with the fence, you don't have to worry about a collision. You start to concentrate on the ball more. So a nice running, sliding catch by Ben Revere and Tanner Roark. Definitely appreciates that effort. But as a center fielder, once you start running at that angle, you're not worried about any collisions. Here's Ruiz, breaking ball, low and away. Phillies box, Galvis a couple of hits. That home run we just saw. The other RBI, Hellickson's squeeze bunt for an RBI back in the second after a pair of walks, a steal, and a wild pitch. Big breaking ball and the strikeout. Phillies take a 2 1 lead. On the evening of Memorial Day. So we're going to the top of the seventh, and it's our USAA salute to the military on this Memorial Day. USAA honors our fallen soldiers.
to baseball brought to you by T-Mobile. Matt Harvey strong today for the Mets. They beat the White Sox with a Neil Walker home run one to nothing. Justin Verlander last six starts a nightmare compared to his first four and the Giants. Uh, yeah it's an even numbered year. They've taken control of the West at the moment. Went into the day Memorial Day four and a half up on the Dodgers. Freddie Galvis has the Phillies on top. Top of the seventh Bryce Harper. Matt Harvey is throwing 97 in the seventh today. Seven shutout. Slow, slow, slow. Two and one. Got a lot of fastballs last time. He's had all change-ups this time. Shows you how it changes from at bat to at bat. Ellickson holds on along, and that one hits Bryce. That got him square. Bryce hit for only the second time all year. Hellickson only the second batter he's hit. I think it was a slider that just kept chasing him and tracking him, and it got the outside of his right knee. Paul Lassard, the Nats trainer. And having been hit everywhere he can be hit, when you get hit there, there's a nerve on the outside of your knee. If you've ever iced your knee, you know that feeling. It'll make you sick to your stomach for a little bit. It's the worst feeling. It's not so much the pain of it hitting your bone, it's there's a nerve on the outside of your knee that just make you want to. Well, I guess not feel well. Well, you know, Hellickson didn't want anybody on base with Murphy coming up. No, in a one run game, he didn't want to hit him and definitely didn't want to hit him with a slider. So there's no intent here. Watch the slider just keep chasing him. Ooh. Outside of the knee, and it's just a horrible, queasy feeling. It stays with you for about five minutes. Only the fourth batter tonight that Hellickson will face from the stretch position. Zimmerman Rendon Ramos after the Mur Murphy double in the second. That's just cruel right there. Huh. Must have thought Bryce was faking it or something. Bryce is having trouble getting back. You can see he can't push off on that leg. Helix is trying to take advantage. Interesting is all I'll say. You figure it out. And ball one to Murphy. 
If somebody hits you in the knee and then throws over three times, I am hobbling into second base as I try to steal it with one leg. And if you hit a ground ball after you hit me in the leg and throw over three times, I don't care what the new rules are about second base. I'm going in hard. Murphy going out hard if it's fair. And it just hooked enough. Just got out front a hair too soon on the off speed. Maybe it was a run back fastball. Check that. Locked in. Just hooks foul in front of the pole. I mean, he went fastball away for a double, fastball in for a homer. And what do you do if you're Helixson now? Maybe try soft? I mean, it's all you can do because the fastball away was not working. The fastball in to Murphy not working. Pitch number two on the homer went a long, long way. About 380 where it left the park, and it went up about 15 or 20 feet. Speed left center ball falling but over to grab it is Goodell. He's going to make a long throw to first and Bryce Harper's out. Ryan Howard stood there like nothing was happening as the ball came right to him on a brilliant throw by Tyler Goodell. Well, nice play by Tyler Goodell and I think that Bryce Harper just had trouble scrambling back with his leg. He wasn't deep because Davey Lopes was telling him to get back. He's thinking if that drops, I'm going to third, and then he tries to get back and watch Ryan Howard. I don't think Bryce thought it was coming in. And did he make it? I don't think so. He didn't argue. Natch will challenge. He probably didn't slide because of getting drilled in the side of the knee, and he had trouble getting back because of that. And on top of that, I don't know if he knew the ball was coming. Really, really slow here on the ball. That's really bang bang. Yeah, I don't know. I can't tell. One run game, top of the seven. It's a big play. Yeah. Now that the ball has to be all the way into the glove, makes a difference on this call, possibly. Last year they went through that whole thing where the ball was within the glove, but maybe not in the pocket. Well, I mean, we just showed Bryce going underneath, so I don't know if he's getting treatment, but if he's safe, they got to find him. Or a pinch run. So my guest to Brooke made the call at first. He's joined by Dana Demuth on your right, the crew chief. Sets coming off. 
Runners out. so far. I mean, getting drilled in the knee, three throwovers to first, and maybe that exacerbated the injury and then the double play and the line drive. Weird. Whole inning, weird. Ryan Zimmerman over two, fly ball to deep left, and a swinging strikeout. Zimmerman didn't like that call. 0 2. Mercedes on the pitch track. I feel like that might have been in a little bit. Let's see. Look where Ruiz is set up. He's set up away. He reaches all the wow. way across. Let the weirdness continue. Yeah, that's hard to believe that one. With the catcher set up on the other side of the plate. 0 2 now. Ryan's got to expand as Hellickson does. Zimmerman deep left center Herrera going back and off the top of the wall it deflects to the left Ryan Zimmerman digging for three throw coming in he's there with two outs Ryan's asking if it's a homer and so am I it hit off that fence behind the wall well there's a yellow vertical line out there on top of the WB Mason sign there it is anything to the right is in play anything off that back fence to the left is a home run. So fence to the right in play fence to the left homer and that hit the fence to the right. Ryan Zimmerman is trying to tell Ryan Howard who's played a few games here that that's a home run. He's asking Howard about the ground rules here at Citizens Bank. I would say nice try. But how big is that double play right now. I thought it was way out of here personally. I got fooled by that one. I thought that was about five rows back. Ryan Zimmerman first triple of the year. The Nats are going to ask for a crew chief review. But clearly in the ballpark. I say Danny the Muse having a good laugh with New York as they're right back on the headsets. It's a home run. Now, if there was a yellow line at the top of that wall, that's a home run. But there's no yellow line. That means that fence is in play, that railing out there. So it's confirmed it's a two out triple for Ryan Zimmerman. Seems like it always happens in baseball when you lose a base runner, the next guy usually gets a hit. In that case, Zimmerman. Very close to a home run that would have tied the game. It'll be up to Anthony Rendon with two outs, and we have a huddle on the Phillies mound here. Well, now would be a good time as any for Anthony Rendon to figure out Jeremy Hellickson. See if anything happens here with these challenge, the challenge and the review to upset his timing a bit. Anthony Rendon has struck out twice tonight. That's a quirky part of this ballpark. That wall 
out there gets as high as 19 feet. Where Ryan hit it, it's about 13 or 14 feet. There's a one hopper from Rendon. And the Nats lose a runner at first on an outfield fly ball. And a home run by a foot or two. game series in Philly tomorrow night. Nats and the Phillies get it on again. It's Joe Ross. Two earned runs are fewer. Seven of his nine starts this season. He'll be facing Aaron Nola and the Phillies over his last seven starts are six and one. Gets you going at 630 with Nats extra tomorrow night on Masson 2. This game summary is brought to you by Cox's new contour. Get right to the good stuff. Two to one Phillies. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning. The difference in this one so far has been Freddie Galvis, a guy you don't think about when you think of home runs, but he got all this one off of Tanner Roark. Oh. Slider down and in, just dropped the barrel on the baseball and made this a two to one game. And since then, there's been a lot of different stuff going on at the ballpark. Chris Isey will take over for Bryce Harper. And according to Nationals policy, we'll find something out about Bryce after the game. So here's it by pitch got right up on the outside of his right knee and got a flush ball didn't go very far that's how you tell how hard he was hit by the pitch so a slider in he couldn't get out of the way it was chasing him and then after that Hellickson threw over like three times in a row line drive to left double play zero misses a home run by an inch and that was the first official Weird ending of the year. Tanner Roark, meanwhile, out for his seventh inning of work. 88 pitches, 60 strikes. He's due to bat third in the eighth. So probably it for him as the ground balls continue. Cesar Hernandez, Tyler Goodell, and Jeremy Hellickson scheduled to hit here. Battle and Bryce's streak of home runs in this ballpark, too. Hernandez, a walk, a steal, a run scored, and a base hit. Ball low, 1 1.
Tanner Roark takes a little bit off and drops it right in there. 2-2. Two -two. Trying to go seven for the sixth time this year. As a breaking ball, he'll cut it off. And just kind of goose it right over to Ryan Zimmerman for the first out. I see a gold glove in Tanner Roark's future. I think he's one of the best fielding pitchers in the league. I mean, maybe anybody that's better. This is an in between off. I watch him just, not a problem. And the flip, such a good athlete. Baseball player that happens to pitch. Yeah, that's uh, maybe the best range we've seen by a pitcher on a ground ball. Tough plays. He's made it look simple. Yeah. Here's Tyler Goodell. One hopper, Anthony Rendon. Jeremy Hellickson's only thrown 79 pitches, and they're about to pinch hit for him. Ladies night, Thursday, June 30th. Special ticket, you can enjoy pregame activities. There's going to be a DJ, a fashion show, tailgate games. The racing presidents will be there hitting on you. You'll also receive an exclusive Nationals Infinity scarf for the Nats take on the Reds at 7.05. To purchase your special ticket, visit nationals.com slash ladies night. That's always a fun night at the ballpark. And that's a sharp scarf, too. Here's DC native Emmanuel Burris to hit for Jeremy Ellickson. So for the Nats in the eighth, maybe it's that old anybody but Hellickson we'd like to face. They're going to take him out after fewer than 80 pitches. Manny Burris, two for 17 is a pinch hitter. Four for 32 overall, four for 33 overall. And we're going to the top <laughs> of the eighth inning. Tanner Roark finishing with a flourish due to bad third. Some things to smile about brought to you by Cricket Wireless. Whoa. Some Patriots joining the Fanatic on Memorial Day. Yeah, those things are officially creepy. I mean, I've had nightmares about things like that chasing me. Not the Fanatic, he's the best, but those things? Oh. Hector Neris, 27th appearance for the Phils. 26 year old right hander from the Dominican. He has a 129 ERA and 37 strikeouts in 28 innings. Wilson Ramos is 0 for 1 career against him. So the Nats are into the Phillies bullpen. But we're talking a lot higher octane here than they've seen for seven innings. Maybe that'll suit a fastball hitting club.
And Neris has got that good split fingered change up at 86 off a 93 mile an hour fastball. It's his best pitch. Is he done or not? 97 pitches, 66 strikes. If the Nats would score two runs right away, or even one, before his batting spot comes up, he could pitch the eighth. That's the split. Felipe Rivero for the eighth if it's not Tanner. Every day, Felipe. Wilson Ramos can't get it. <laughs> He's on tracking that. Watch the split down and in to Wilson. Late movement, bottom drop enough. You get a fastball early, you got to hit it because his out pitch is as good as any reliever. The National League. So here's Danny 0 for 1 with a strikeout against Neris. Left handed pinch hitter on deck. As Clint Robinson steps out, he actually has a base hit and a walk against this right hand. So if he throws you two splits for balls, you, you have to be all in on a fastball right now. I mean, if he throws you three in a row, swing and miss, who cares? But you you have to be all in on a heater, 2-0. Hasn't given up a run in ten innings, Neris. Espinosa taking 93 right in there. Neris tied among all National League relievers, or rather first in strikeouts, tied for first in ball games pitched, and in the top two in innings pitched with 28. He's one of the reasons they've won some close games, bridging things to their closer, Genmar Gomez, who, by the way, is 17 of 18 in save situations. Same way here, he threw you three splits out of four pitches, 3 1, all in on the heater. You're thinking about driving the baseball. Throwing you another split. Here it comes. Good eye. Yeah, one out walk. It'll be Robinson. See, that's a in your division. You faced a guy at bat by Danny Espinosa. What does that mean? Well, Naris makes a living on throwing balls that look like strikes. So if you're aggressive with him, you're falling right into his trap. And Espinosa right there with a great at bat. Fish wasn't biting. He knew that he was going to throw those splits below the zone. He took them all. Now that, I could try to steal a base. Yeah, that makes this interesting because pinch hitters, as a rule, late in the game, are aggressive guys looking to swing early. But as mentioned, Clint's seen him a couple of times, has a base hit and a walk. John Franco was like that with the Mets. Never threw a strike. He made a living at it. First pitch fastball away. Clint Robinson robbed of a hit. Then it was dropped. So the batter's out. He dropped it on the exchange. And that saved the day for Danny Espinosa because he was doubled off first base. 
Yeah, it's bad luck and good luck all in one play. Yeah, Franco might have thrown his shoulder out making that play. The bad luck was for Clint Robinson, and the good luck was for the Nats and Danny Espinosa because that ball was smoked. I mean, was he in control of that ball long enough? I guess he was coming down to his feet when it popped out of his glove. Too late now. Nats have no challenges. And you can't review catch no catch in the infield. Challenge. I mean that ball's hit right on the nose. Yeah, yeah, that long enough. So one of those at each corner of the infield tonight, Wilson Ramos in similar fashion, robbed by Ryan Howard. Back in the second with a runner at third, two outs. Stretch your rib cage, your oblique making that play too. Boy, tough luck for the Nats tonight on the infield line drives. Boy, the Phillies are living on the edge, aren't they? Murphy with the foul home run. Then the double play that was challenged. Zimmerman off the top of the fence in left center. And now that line drive off the bat of Clint Robinson living on the edge. Here's Ben Revere 0 for 3 tonight. Revere has never faced Hector Neris. Top of the eighth inning, two 4 0 fills, one 3 0 Nationals. Still waiting the first pitch to Revere. Long hold, Espinosa, not that big of a lead, time given. Pitch out, Espinosa holding. Well, now you can bet that they won't do it two times in a row. And if you're Ben Revere, you got a 1 0 count to work with. Pretty quick to the plate, though. Danny Espinosa, you're hawkeyeing that split in the dirt. That's all you're thinking about. If you're not stealing, you're trying to read a down angle on one of those splits. On the move, pitches a strike, throw, long bounce. Delayed call, Danny Espinosa, two for two stealing this year. That's a stolen base. And what do I mean by that? Bottom of the eighth, you're down by one. The Phillies know you're going. The Nats know you're going. Everybody in the ballpark knows you're going, and you still steal the base. Kind of a little more deliberate delivery to the plate. Do they call that a strike? Yeah. Huh. And Danny Espinosa sliding to the outside corner of the base. Carlos Ruiz with a, a long one hopper that just hit right behind the mound. Two and one now, a base hit ties it. And Revere takes ball three.
So many times in baseball, Carp, you see guys patting their stats with stolen bases. You know, four to nothing game, they steal third. Five to two game, five to one game, they're stealing bases. But to me, the true value of a stolen base is late in a ball game when your team's tied or you're down by one and you're a guy that runs, everybody knows you're going, you still steal the base. That's the true value of a stolen base. Look at the outfield defense. Peter Borges is giving the entire right side of the ballpark to Ben Revere. So obviously they want to pitch him away, use that split. Outfield way around to the left. 3 1 pitch. Strike call. Some of the 21,993 standing up. And Ben Revere takes the walk, bringing up Jason Worth. Jason Worth, one for five career against Hector Neris with a home run. Well, I think Ruiz said, let's throw Ben Revere a couple of splits. And if he swings, he swings. If he doesn't, we'll go right on right. Jason Worth has one of those swings where he can scoop up one of those splits if he wants to. was three for 13 with three RBIs in the series here earlier. Looking for his first base hit tonight. Something going on down there. Well, it worked for a ball. I'm in. Whatever you're doing, I'm doing it. 1-1. One, one. Worth got a hanger. Bangs it to left. Espinosa scores. Revere to third. Worth to second. He is safe. And the Nats have tied it. <laughs> It worked. There you go. I find each other. That was your double. And the strategy kind of backfires there for the Phillies. Carlos Ruiz wanted Jason Worth. He went out and told Neris, let's go after him. And he got to split up. You see where that one was versus the other ones up in the zone? Dan talking about his hands being a little bit down and the adjustment he made. He was able to get to that split. Hustles into second base. He wasn't going initially. He saw the throw go to third base in the bullpen, taking full credit for tying the ball game at two. And they should. Now, instead of Bryce Harper, it's Chris Heisey. And he will face Neris for the first time. Well, each pitcher or each team has paid for walking two guys in an inning. Tanner Roark gave up a run without a hit, a couple of walks back in the second. With a hit, Phillies have walked two here in the eighth. And now they look to Chris Heisey, the Nats do, for a big go ahead hit. Danny Espinosa, credit for a great at bat, a big stolen base, and being out there for Jason Worth. That, I wouldn't stop. I don't know what Sammy Solis is doing, but I'm going to try it. They could still make Tanner Roark a winner. Showing bunt, Heisey got some people moving around.
Well, you don't want to face the next guy, so Chris Heisey should get something to hit here. Serious protection on deck with Daniel Murphy and the bullpen. Hey, you got Sean Kelly waving. Then you got Sammy Solis with the crisscross arms doing something. And they're all doing the same thing. They can't change. Uh, there's Kelly waving, Solis crisscross. Man, it's ball three. Wow. They're, they're taking credit for all this. Yeah, appeal on the swing, no swing. Look at look at what the magic in the bullpen did. It got a strike called a ball. I mean, there are two strikes called a ball. Yeah, I thought pitch number two was a strike. Yeah, let's stop now. I, this might be the worst pitch of the at bat, along with number one. Well, that's the bottom of the box. Pitch track does like the low strike. Now three and one, Heisey in RBI mode here. Swing and a miss. Three and two. Well, they can't walk him and deal with Murphy. Pete McCannon has two lefties, and neither one of them are up. Yeah. Heisey takes ball four, and somebody's pitching to Daniel Murphy. Three walks in the inning. Been interesting to see if that was Bryce Harper's at bat and if they would have walked him to get to Daniel Murphy. That would have been fun. And here's a number for you as Murphy digs in and the Phillies have a visit. Daniel Murphy against Hector Neris career is four for seven with two doubles, a walk, and two RBIs. So he has seen this stuff before. I mean, if you go by Danny Espinosa's at bat, if you're Daniel Murphy, I think patience would be the key. I mean, you might try to ambush a first pitch fastball. That's some key in the driver's seat, Daniel Murphy tonight. Watch the Wade Boggs double. Oh, that's just beautiful. I like that one better than Homer. And here's the homer. Wait, I changed my mind. I like the homer better than the double. And maybe I'll change my mind again right here, right now. Let's see. Okay, Taking go. ball one. Balls that appear as strikes. And it seems like the Nats are onto that. Another category where Murphy's hitting just under 400. Two and zero. Oh. <laughs> what, what do you do here? You're absolutely locked in. Yeah. I know. Every ball you've hit tonight's almost been a home run. Conventional wisdom says you got to make the guy throw two strikes in the at bat. But if you're Daniel but Murphy, but you're not. But we're not Daniel Murphy. You're superhuman right now. Do you, do you get off a 2-0 swing right here on a fastball? Or are you taking all the way? That was almost a balk. I think Daniel Murphy said it was a balk. He's complaining that it was. Something caused Ruiz to go out. Let's see. Yeah, he flinched his glove. He Boy, did. They just his, missed a balk. His glove flinched before he stepped off, and that's what Daniel Murphy is complaining about. I think they're still talking. Well, four guys missed it. Murphy base hit. Revere scores. Worth coming home. The throw is through. Safe. And the Nationals lead four to two as the best hitter in baseball delivers again. And the bullpen with the voodoo they got going on down there. Absolutely working. Who's better than Daniel Murphy, please? Somebody tell me. A double, a home run, 
And now the go-ahead base hit with the bases loaded. Do you take or do you swing? Daniel Murphy answered the question. And the bullpen, whatever they're doing, same seats, keep doing what you're doing, it's working. How about Daniel Murphy, folks? Five out of eight career against Neris with four RBIs. <laughs> They've knocked him out. And now another Phillies call to the bullpen. This one brought to you by the UPS store. Stop by for all your printing, copying, and other business needs because together there's nothing we can't solve. And that's what the bullpen's telling each other right now. Duo. And if you're Daniel Murphy, why not? I mean, you're the hottest hitter on the planet, maybe the best hitter on the planet. And I think the average went above 400 with this one. So a buck would have been one run, Carp, like you said in the break. But this is two runs. A good hustle by Jason Worth, the fist pump, and the bullpen did all of that by themselves. Just ask them. Ryan it. Zimmerman, one for two against. Yeah, the Phillies closer, Jen Mark Gomez, comes in. Uh, first place is fun. Got to have fun playing it. That's making baseball fun again. Whatever the bullpen did this inning, that's what it's all about, folks. Sorry. I love that stuff. Oh, one to Zimmerman. Ryan, triple last time. I mean, and just to take it a step further to show you how locked in Daniel Murphy is, Neris flinched. His glove flinched. He's not missing anything. He's not missing fastballs. He's not missing changeups. He's not missing a glove flinch for a balk with the bases loaded when everybody else did. Superhuman. Target away. Zimmerman up the middle. And that's a tag by Cesar Hernandez on Daniel Murphy. The Nats have a big inning. They score three times, just two hits.
Jackson, brought to you by Airlines for America, where airplanes land, opportunity takes off, and by Navy Federal Credit Union, proudly serving the armed forces and their families for over 80 years, federally insured by NCUA. Tana Roar could still get a win tonight, thanks to the bat of Daniel Murphy, and we see how the bullpen follows him up. It'll be Felipe Rivero up first here in the eighth inning. Fastball mid 90s. Slider to go with it. Nasty change up on top of that. And he seems like he's everyday Felipe. It's hard to think of a game recently where he hasn't pitched. This guy's going to be a good hitter someday. That guy right there. Keep working at it, Murphy. You'll, you'll get it. Rivero to Peter Borges, who's 0 for 1 career against him. I feel like he's flirted with the cycle two or three times this year, and he's a triple shy tonight. And who knows if that ball gets in the gap with that close the Tyler Goodell play to have a cycle. 0 2 swing and a miss the fireballer turns one over on the right handed batter and with more on Felipe here's Dan Bob FP's joking about everyday Felipe will get this this is Felipe's 26th appearance of the year Nationals have now played 52 games every other game Felipe getting in there and he was asked recently whether this heavy workload has affected him he says no he actually prefers it he says he feels a lot better when his arm is active when he's getting consistent work so a lot of action for Felipe Rivero but that's okay with him yes yeah, some guys thrive on the work and in his case because he's part of that so-called a bullpen the game's usually on the line and some guys just love that yeah he does and it doesn't seem like it matters whether he comes in behind tied or ahead he's the same guy I mean he's 24 years old he's got a lot of bounce back in that arm and I'm going to stick to he's going to be a big league closer someday and he's going to make a lot of money Dupal Herrera has handled Felipe well, surprisingly. Two for five. One one pitch. That's nasty. I mean, you're talking about 15, 16 miles an hour between the heater and this. And a slider that started at Herrera and broke off the plate away. Then the challenge fastball, 96. Lefty batter around late on it. So that change up down and into the left hander counts even 2 2. Ready Galvis after this. Pitch up a little from the one before. See, that's where when you think of Herrera and the walks and the on base percentage, oh, you know, he just walks. No, foul off pitches like that with two strikes, how you walk. I mean, it's not easy to walk at the major league level. I mean, everybody at this level throws strikes. How do you walk? You foul off borderline pitches, you have a good eye. 
but you have to really work to walk at the highest level. That's why on base percentage is such a big deal because these guys get paid to get you out and they get paid to throw strikes. Three and two. Ninety nine. Well, the Nats are up by two. If they're going to get the tying run in the batter's box, you want them to earn it by swinging the bat. Although the way Herrera's going this year, he earns a lot of things by what you're talking about. Walking after all the hard work he does to get there. So a 3-2 with one out. Swing and a miss. Maybe not expecting a change up. And straight down it went, two down. And a little reaction from Felipe Rivera. We haven't seen this yet. We saw the stomp on the bag the other day when he was covering first, but watch Felipe Rivera. All right. A little flair there. Confidence level high. I like it. Well, that was a guy who had handled him some, Herrera, with those two hits. And now it's Freddie Galvis, the Phillies hitting star of the night with a base hit and a home run. This time he turns around and bats from the right side. Galvis right handed 239. And against Rivero, one for three. Yeah, he keeps this up. He's going to have Pete Cosma's nickname in a minute. Pete Cosma's middle name. Blake Trinan, in case it gets to Franco, who's on deck. But with Michael Franco on deck, he should be taken all the way right here. His job is to get on base and get the tie around the plate. Daniel Murphy called time coming into Rivero. Oh, I said, if I'm hitting right now, it's in a gap and I'm standing on seven. Oh, he would never say that to his team. I'm just joking. I told him, relax, he's taking a strike. Exactly what we're talking about. He has to be taken here. 4 2 ball game and a 2 0 pitch. I don't think he swung at ball three and it was in the zone, but stick it with a power guy on yeah. deck in a two run game. Why is he swinging? Yeah, I agree. Oh! And Rivero gets a line drive right at Revere. One, two, three for Felipe Rivero. This one into the ninth inning. Rendon Ramos and Espinosa. The Nets by two.
Washington Nationals assistant hitting coach. Thank you to uh, all the military service men and service women. And we, I want to wish you all a happy Memorial Day. Thank you, Jock. Or Jock, he says he'll take it either way. Let's go back to the eighth inning. Jason Worth, nice job by elevating Neris ball down the corner. Danny Espinosa with the great leadoff walk to start that up. Actually, Wilson Ramos struck out to start the inning. And then here comes the guy that you just have trouble getting out. Daniel hits Murphy 2 0 count. A walk before him, and you're thinking, well, is he going to take? Is he going to swing? He showed us. Anthony Rendon leads off top nine against Genmar Gomez. Anthony, couple of career knocks. Late, late swing. One out. Ryan Howard on assistant. Well, you can win a meet and greet with Anthony Rendon if you check out at Masson Nationals on Twitter for your chance to win. That's twitter.com slash Masson Nationals brought to you by Cox's new contour. Get right to the good stuff. Next up, Wilson Ramos, so for three career against Gomez. Ramos tonight at 0 for 3 night. A hard luck 0 for 3. Robbed of an extra base hit by Ryan Howard back in the second. He gets jammed on that one. Michael Franco, two outs. And that leaves it up to Danny Espinosa here. Jonathan Papelbon blew a save in the 10th inning against the Phillies here back in April. That was a one run game. He has a two run lead at least when he takes the mound tonight. And the Phillies will go righty, lefty, righty. Franco, Howard, and Ruiz, unless they employ outfielder David Lowe somewhere in there. Have a switch hitter, Andres Blanco, who had a base hit in that inning against Papelbon here. No swing. Count goes to 2 0. Oh. Steven Drew for Felipe Rivero if the inning continues. Rivero, 16, actually 15 pitches, 10 strikes. Espinoza high in the air left side. There we go. Freddy Galvis makes the grab. Three, four, and five against the ex Philly Papelbon when we come back.
Jonathan Papelbon made one appearance in that series here. That was the Sunday afternoon. So he's going to appear in game one of this three game set. Fastball slider split for Jonathan 21st appearance ERA at 275 13 for 15 and save chances opponents hit 260 against the Nats closer. Then we'll check the matchups as we go through the bottom of the ninth here. So Papelbon this year. Nearly 20 innings 19 hits fairly hittable. Good strikeout to walk ratio 14 over 5 and the opponent's batting average 260. Michael Franco. Did not face Papelbon that day. This will be his first career at bat against the former Philly. In 2011 with the Red Sox, Papelbon's fastball averaged 95 miles an hour. This year it's averaging 91. Papelbon's last save Thursday night in the 2 1 win over St. Louis. 90 right in there to start the bottom of the ninth. Franco 0 for 3. Just wonder how he's feeling after nearly hurting himself on that line drive off the bat of Clint Robinson. Breaking ball that was hanging a bit. And the Phillies, just like that, will get the tying run into the batter's box. Worth tried to grab it barehand to make a throw to second. And the Phillies not going down without some sort of fight here in the ninth inning. Next up, Ryan Howard. A ninth double of the year for Franco, and it looked like a slider that he went down to get. Jason Worth tried to cut it off. No big deal. It's a double either way. Good hustle by Worth. And that runner means nothing. So now it's Papel Bond and Howard, who is 0 for 4 career against him with three strikeouts. They're going to put Daniel Murphy in short right field on the shift. Anthony Rendon will stay two thirds of the way from second base to third to prevent Franco from just walking over there. There's the aforementioned Tommy Joseph who's listed as a catcher and a first baseman for Ruiz. That's trouble. It's now a 4-3 game and Ryan Howard's the tying run at second base with nobody out. It's just hard when you have a closer that doesn't miss bats. I mean, it's that simple. You're just hoping they hit it at somebody where back in the day he was missing barrels, but right now he has to rely on command. The off speed, the split. So back to back doubles to start the bottom of the ninth for the Phillies. Four to three game. David Lowe with good speed running. And of the last six batters, Applebaum is now faced in this ballpark. Five have hits. So here's Tommy Joseph facing Papel Bond for the first time. And his job is to move the double at least a third. First time we've seen it, been told he has powered all fields. Four years of age. He was leading the International League in hitting at 347 when they called him up. Good location on the 92, a little run back to it. Big hook. 
big first out. Runner stays at second. Tyler Goodell next. Well, the second pitch is what set this up. A perfect fastball by Jonathan Papelbon on the black, and then he goes below the strike zone with the slider for strike three. So a huge first out here at the bottom of the ninth. Pardon me, Goodell on deck. Switch hitter Cesar Hernandez in now. 0 for 1 career against Papelbon. Does a walk, a steal, a run, and a base hit tonight. Strike call, 1-1. One, one. Johnny Holiday, Ray Knight in the studio tonight. When this one's over, they have the Nets extra post game. Presented by W.B. Mason. 4 3 Nats. Tying run at second, one out. Off speed, way out ahead. Good fastball, good slider. Thinking back there, you pick up your leg, do that inside move, slow him down a little bit. If he's thinking about stealing, left handed hitter up, tie and run, I doubt it. Two two pitch, swing and a miss. Hernandez going out of the strike zone, two down. A lot of run on this fastball. Maybe started on the outer half of the plate and ran off. I think Ramos wanted that in, but a location mistake ends up working for Papelbon nicely. Now Tyler Goodell, the right-handed hitting rookie, facing Papelbon for the first time. Be one of those deals where the runner on second relays location and you cross up the hitter. Ramos setting up in, fastball tailing away. That's why a lot of guys don't want that. Tonight, a walk, a fly ball, and a grounder. Tying run as David Lowe takes his lead. First pitch, inside edge with a front door breaking ball. Even one more. Dusty working that toothpick. And if I had one, I'd be doing the same thing. One one, and he went. On a pitch upstairs, one ball, two strikes. 
Well, if he's going to check swing on that, maybe you try one more above the letters. You got some pitches to play with. You also have a base. Let's see what they decide on doing. Nets by a run. Two outs, two strikes. Trying to agree on a pitch. One, two. Tantalizing. Goodell. Good take, and the count's even. Soft liner, Murphy, Nats win. Had it all the way, never down. Yeah, Murphy did. <laughs> and so Jonathan Papelbon gives up a couple of doubles, strands the tying run at second base as the Nationals win the first game of the series 4-3. Well, it was the Daniel Murphy show tonight, so how fitting is this? Jonathan Papelbon gets the line drive to who else? Daniel Murphy to end it. Dusty Baker said, yeah, we've had this all the way. Hey, well, congratulations, Chris. Tanner Roark gets his fourth win of the year. He's four and four. Narrows the loser at one and two. Papelbon, 14th save. It was a nail biter in Philadelphia tonight. Tomorrow, the Nats, game two of the series, Joe Ross and Aaron Nola.